Ah, uh, thank you. So um, I guess we, we can start now. Um, we have numbers, yes. So um, welcome everyone to this uh, weekly call, uh, Sava Implementation Meetup. Um, in this uh, meeting, we do discuss issues server administration. We started last year, uh, the last month, December, and um, October, around November, December. But then we we proceeded to break two weeks breaks before before the year ended for the for the Christmas holidays. Um, last time we had this call, uh, we, we we were. Bob was interviewing um, our security, uh, Michael. Michael, uh, and 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 um, today's call is kind of going 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 to extend on the same. We 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 want to talk about um, ways that we can we can um, improve our server security. Um, at least uh, on a fresh install, we make sure that at least a few security, basic security controls are appeared too. So I prepared a few slides that we, we, we're going to go through while, while I'll be explaining um, those security checks. So let me share my, my screen. So yes, so when we talk about um, server security, uh, th there are uh, security models that we do follow, and 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 one of the of the models is the um, a model where we want to make sure that uh, whoever accesses the the server is is authenticated, and 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 they are who they they say they are. <laughs> we want to also um, limit what what they can access. And uh, by that I mean, uh, even though you you really are the same, the person that you you claiming to be, and you have access to the server, it's not that you cannot you, you can access everything on that server, but only <clears throat> um, things that you are allowed to access. And when by that we follow the principle of least privileged. <clears throat> by that I mean you you are given access to components that you really need access to, and then you are denied everything else. And there's also an aspect of accounting. Uh, that means uh, everything that you do is accounted, it's uh, written somewhere, and in case of an incident, that can be tracked easily. Uh, security also can be, can be implemented uh, in, in multi-layer. That is, um, you, you want to look down your server, not only on, on, on one layer, but, but on multiple layers, that is from the host level to the um, application level. And in our case, uh, our standard deployment of DHIS2 instance <coughs> is done on, on, on LXE containers. And with that, it, it adds an additional layer of security. And even within those LXD containers, we do run um, uh, um, a filtering, network filtering, uh, that is a firewall, which um, blocks things that we don't want to access uh, that particular container. And on even uh, application level, we don't just, um, we, we still do limit what um, uh, can be accessed. So our deployments mostly is, is automated. We are using Ansible scripts. Uh, one of them and 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 bash scripts, which automates the whole process of deploying um, the applications. And with automated deployments, these security checks, security controls uh, are just implemented on fly. You don't have to go back later and 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 or you don't have to do that manually. If you adopt deploying your app or the application the HS2 application using um, automated automated way, then these checks um, 
uh, are just fixed on, on fly. So we have components that we want to, to secure. And first of all, uh, as much as you deploy your application on a given host, um, there are components that are related to the application. In our case, uh, we have proxy, Tomcat server, database, and, and finally backup. Well, backup is not one of the components, but it's a security feature that we want to, in every installation, to implement. However, things that we do have um, installed during the automated installation are proxy, Tomcat server, and the database. So we want to break down our security discussions into these details. Um, uh, and um, our, our, the first one on our list is the, is, the, is the host OS. So mostly our deployment happens on the, on the Ubuntu server and um, all deployments can be running old LTL, LTS releases, um, but then <clears throat> LTS releases are just supported five years. Like for instance, Ubuntu 18.04 LTS release its support is its uh, support is expiring uh, this year, uh, April. So that means if you are running your DHIS2 instance on 18.04, you do have to upgrade to at least the next LTS, which is 20.04, and it is supported until uh, 2025. So on the host level, we at least have a firewall running, and it is uncomplicated firewall. Just to demonstrate that, I can I can log into one of the servers and show you. And one of the servers that I do have an instance running is 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 this one. It's running on um, some cloud environment, so it has a firewall running, and I can demonstrate that by showing UFW status. So it has a firewall running. And as you have seen, uh, the, the status shows that the firewall is active and only one port is allowed or is just open from the, from the internet. And the port is 822. That port is um, specifically for SSH traffic. Anything else is really, um, is really locked. If you try to access any other port from the internet, uh, apart from port 22, then you will not be able to access it, access it. Of course, the server is listening to other ports. It's not only SSH listening right now. We can check with uh, SS command. Uh, we have other services running. Even SSH is listening on port 22. But that is not open on the on the firewall. That means even if you try accessing your your secure shell on port twenty two, you will not be allowed in because that is um, locked on the on the firewall level. So um, even though SSH is um, is the only way, it's the only gateway that we can access this server. It needs also to be to be secured. Um, SSH supports password authentication, key-based authentication, and we do um, advise that we adopt key-based authentication and we disable password authentication. So that is the case in, in, in our installation. And you can enforce that by editing its SSHD configuration file. Uh, and, and, and turning off password authentication and enabling only key-based authentication. Um, there are other security practices that you can also adopt, like you leveraging on fail to, ba to ban um, tool, which um, really checks uh, or monitors your SSH attempt logins, and it blocks um, access if it, it, it's going past a certain number of uh, times. And with SSH also, you want to use a different port, not necessarily uh, an added security practice, but it, it in a way, because uh, bots on the internet and, and even the attackers do uh, try 
to access your server on, on the default port, which is port 22. So you want to limit the, the kind of logs uh, or uh, those access attempts and, 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 and use a different port so that even though they try uh, pitting your server on port 22, it will not be listening on that port and it will be on, on a different port. Um, you want your server to be patched timely. You could uh, enable um, automated um, updates uh, and upgrades. Um, and you, as I mentioned before, you should make sure that your server um, is at least running supported LTS release. Um, for instance, right now, 16.04 is not on that list. And the last on that list is 18.04 uh, LTS, which is going to, uh, its support is going to expire very soon. So on a fresh install of your server, we recommend it to be minimal. However, uh, sometimes you, you might have an OS that has packages that you don't, you don't really uh, use. So we recommend also that you do um, ensure that you have packages that you use and, and, and those that you don't use, you delete them from the system. This is going to help you um, at least uh, list packages that you have. It's just one of the commands that you can use to list the packages that you have. And <clears throat> here you could potentially um, note those packages that you are not um, actively using and you can delete them with sudo apt uh, removed command. <clears throat> Next on our list is the, is the Tomcat. Tomcat is the is, is web application. Uh, um, is, it's um, it's a, it's a web app. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a web server that's used to run um, Java-based um, applications. And our DHIS2 is, is Java-based and it's run on top of uh, Tomcat. So on a fresh install of, of a Tomcat, it, it has uh, extraneous extra files that you don't need, like um, root. Uh, you want to delete that on your web apps directory and ensure that you have files that you really, you really require. It also, um, um, it also comes with um, the default install um, is not appearing to the best um, configuration, um, configuration uh, permissions. For instance, um, a, a file, let me just demonstrate on the login. Alexi exec HMIS. This is um, it's it, of course the the application is running with Tomcat user, so you want to make sure that Catalina Home or Catalina Base is is owned by the admin user, and number two that is 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 also. Um, within um, Tomcat group, it's owned by them. The group is Tomcat and that read write permissions are restricted only to root user and, and Tomcat group and others are not given permissions to read write or execute to that, um, to that uh, directory. Let me find LXCXEC, HMIS. Yes, you can just check this. Uh, this is one of them. It's Catalina home for this, at least this container. It's owned by, it's owned by Tomcat. Uh, the, the, fact that the directory is owned by root user and group is Tomcat. And on top of that, only root user is given access, read, write, execute access to that directory. And group Tomcat is given read, execute permissions. So others are not given are given zero permissions on that um, on that directory. So we also make sure that our Tomcat instance is 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 running behind uh, proxy. We can do use we, we do use um, either Apache two or Nginx, and we are 
basing basing our guides on 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 the on the CIS benchmarks um, security checklist, which is a hard one here. which is something like this, um, that it gives you the checklist which you have to do when you, you have your Tomcat installed. Uh, this is just a, a small list. It goes to 10 point something. Um, if you can see the, the next part of this uh, CI spend, but it goes, it goes up to 10. And these are the, the checks that you need to follow after you have uh, installed your DHIS2 instance. and um, these all um, checks are automated, of course, with the with the with the DHS two installation script. That after the, the the installation is finished, you're gonna you're gonna have your Patalina Home adhering the to the um, to the um, to the permissions as stipulated on these um, CIS check marks. So even even dis disabling um, the 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 shutdown port, of course. Um, our apps are running on LXC containers. All our applications are running on LXC containers. And on top of that, uh, they are running container-based firewall. Let me just show you that. So within the container itself, we just limit access to the, to the application. And, 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 and we are limiting access from specific IP address. As you can see here, um, 172.19.2.2 is just um, um, an address for the proxy. So we want our Tomcat instance to be accessible only from the proxy. And if the IP address is, trying to, is, is different from this, then it cannot hit port 8080. Also, port 4000 is, is for Munin and, and it's only accessible again from the proxy. And then 4949 is, is the Munin node and it's only accessible from the Munin server. So as much as we have host-based firewall, we also filter traffic on, on, uh, on, the, on, the, on the container uh, running that particular instance. Same applies to the Postgres container. Um, we want to limit access to that Postgres container to, to be only accessible from instances. For instance, here, this is the Postgres container that runs database, and we can check um, its firewall status, it's running, and it's only allowing access from, from one. These top two are the instances, and, 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 and those are really uh, Tomcat instances. They are allowed to access the database. And um, thirdly is the, of course, the port 4949, which is opening its access from the Munin server. So, yeah. Tito, do you so, want us to ask questions or will we follow Yes, them yes. Or make comments? Yeah, you can. Uh, just on the, on the Tomcat setup, um, the biggest, one of the biggest problems we see is when people download the binary Tomcat. Often they might do this because they want to run a particular version and then they just get the targ zip file and then they un untar it. Um, and that's usually where you find all the permissions and everything is wrong. Um, mm -hmm. Generally speaking, the, the Ubuntu and Debian packaging of Tomcat is actually quite good. So usually if you just deploy using apt-get install Tomcat 9, uh, most of those controls are actually already implemented, the CIS controls, which is good. Um, recently, they started disabling the shutdown port. That used to be the case up until version 9. Uh, the only thing I think that we do with the tools on Tomcat container is um, changing the ownership of the web apps directory. Because that's one... That's one... Um, thing that is left owned by Tomcat um, with the apt install. So that's something that a lot of these, I think the thing to bear in mind is that a lot of work is done in that Ubuntu package. And if you're not gonna use the package, but are gonna un unpack the Tomcat yourself, 
then you really have quite a lot to do in terms of verifying all the permissions and stuff on different directories. Exactly. Uh, then that is when you need to at least adhere to that checklist and make sure that those uh, controls are met. And we don't implement all of the controls either. Um, and I think this is maybe something Michael is also going to be working on. We kind of cherry pick, I guess, what we figure are the most important ones. Um, one in particular that I'm thinking of is the, the um, uh, what do they call it? Running, running the security sandbox thing in Java. Um, yeah. We, we're currently not running, I think it's probably down near the bottom. <laughs> we're, done, we're not using client cert authentication, for example because we're not, we're not running HTTPS on the Tomcat. Um, and we also, uh, we're not running it under the security manager. It would be quite nice to run it under the security manager, but there's quite a lot of things that are potentially broken when you do that. Anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just adding a few thoughts to what you would exactly. already it's showed. Okay. Yep. That's welcome. On the firewall stuff, I mean, you showed the one of the things that's important to bear in mind because you've got quite strict access to that Tomcat container is if you're going to set up something, and we're typically going to see this if you've got an integration layer or something, if you've got some API based, you know, you know maybe it's an Apache Camel based route that's doing integration with your Tomcat from a different IP, you do need to remember that you're going to have to create a separate firewall rule for that is by default, exactly. you won't be able to access it. Yeah. So yes, the the firewall rules running on the on the on the DHIS or other instance container looks like these ones. And these are very strict. And as Bob mentioned, if you you want to open access from some different integration container, then you have to add an extra rule there. Okay, that's so next up is the um, is the um, is the database PostgreSQL database. Yeah. So um, as I mentioned, there is um, firewall of of course running within the, the the database container, and we also um, with with the configuration files edit them with Ansible edit the PG HPA configuration, and ensure that access is only allowed from um, a a given IP address. In our case, it's um, it's um, instances running uh, DHIS2 um, application. So um, as much as we are blocking on the on the firewall level, we do really again restrict on the PostgreSQL application level, and that matches not only the IP address but which database do you want to access and. Um, with which user. So it, it's restricting not only with the IP, but with other details. So the file is edited during the deployment and it's on etc Postgres. The last lines. So during the automated deployment, these two lines are added depending on the number of, of instances that you want to, to install. So those two line restricts um, um, the way your, your database is gonna be accessed. It only allows access from, from um, hard-coded IP addresses. And number two is to which database and with which user. Uh, yeah, so if, even if you have um, a user added in your database and you want to access it from network and, and its entry is not here, then you, you will not be able to access with that user. So yeah, um, that explains um, the three um, components that I have within the database uh, that um, firewall is enforced and PG HPA configurations have, have had coded entries that allows access uh, from different IP address with some given user and uh, and, and, and its password, of course, is from the application side. And um, next is the, the proxy. 
uh, we, we, we do not access our applications directly, that is Tomcat app directly from, from the internet. We go through the proxy, uh, reverse proxy. And in our case, we, we are using um, Apache 2 and, 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 and um, Nginx for that matter. And with proxy, you could implement uh, other security controls. One is you could um, limit access to your, your services, say, with geographical uh, location. You don't want to say if you, if you don't want, if you want to block access from certain region, then you can enforce that on the Nginx level or, or even um, Apache 2 level, proxy levels for that matter. You could also, um, if, if there is uh, a known uh, vulnerability and um, its patch is under development, then you, you could also potentially uh, block access to certain endpoints, which is um, vulnerable until its patch is, is, is available. Uh, it's on, on those proxies that we implement strict um, transport layer security, um, TLS and SSL. Um, and um, with proxy, you could also potentially monitor the access logs and, 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 um, and error logs. So it adds, it gives you an extra layer of security and, um, and it it's ab abstracts your, your applications from the external access, you know, because uh, users and clients do interact with the proxy and the proxy do proxy forward, um, forwards your request to the backend application. So most of the, our cases, we, we have more than uh, one running instances of DHS2. You could have production instance, which is um, used for production purposes and uh, another test insta instance. So if it was not for, um, for the proxy, then how else would we uh, proxy somehow um, route those requests to different applications. Say you have one uh, DNS ad, uh, subdomain and wants to match the, um, the request uh, address and proxy forward to the to different backend applications. So it's also from the proxy that we do routing to the apps that we have um, running and it can be more than one. So yeah, next is, is, is backups. Um, um, we, we want to plan, um, you know, backing up uh, or, or planning for backup is also a security uh, that we want to ensure that we, we, we plan even before the installation. Because um, uh, without backup and you have an incident, then it's a problem. So, um, and, and, and just doing or planning for backup, it, planning for, for backup is one thing, but then you need to also test your backup and ensure that in case of, um, uh, or, or rather your recovery works because um, it, it, would, it would not make sense if you have a backup that is not working. So you want to test your backups and ensure that they are working and um, ensure that you have um, your backups pushed somewhere else. Well, you could use um, a server running somewhere uh, offsite and you, you, you do your local backups and push to that site. And of course you can um, automate that so that it runs it's uh, stipulated time times following uh, a policy that you you do configure, and um, you could also push it to cloud. Well, the the cloud providers, major cloud providers, um, do provide S3 uh, bucket storage, so you you can push to that, you can procure that service and push your backups to to um, that endpoint. So backup is, 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 is an interesting topic and uh, we, we're going to have a conversation, or future conversations uh, around backups and even um, use cases. Uh, how do you guys uh, implement backups uh, in, your, in your environment? So yes, yeah, that is, that is all I have today uh, in this quick presentation. Any questions?
I got a quick comment again, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if you go back to your host and do UFW status, the exit from the exit from that one, yeah. You are using you are using allow to port eight twenty two slash TCP. We're good, but it can be a little bit tighter still. You mentioned a bit about fail to ban. You know, fail to ban will will protect against the repeated attempts to brute force on the SSH port. But in even with UFW, instead of using allow, if you use limit, so your firewall rule instead of instead of saying allow does limit instead, then it will limit. Um, I think six attempts on the SSH port within 30 seconds. And if, if you do more than six attempts, then it will temporarily ban you. So it's kind of got a, um, it's got a behavior a little bit similar to, oh yeah, yeah, like that. That's actually a little bit better than just doing UFW, just doing allow. Um, yeah, exactly. Gives you some of the benefit of fail to ban without having to install fail to ban. Small point. Thank you. So yeah, so this this um these checks that I've just talked about, most of them are automated with them um, if you use uh, our tools, which is. Um, DHS to Ansible tools. So you don't have to, to kind of tick the, the checks one by one when you do your installation. However, if you, you're planning to do manual setup where you do set the Postgres uh, 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 proxy and, 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 and even your instance separately, then you need to at least um, have a checklist which you, you, you follow to make sure that your deployment uh, at least meet, meets uh, these uh, basic security uh, um, checks. And, um, and however, if, if, if you want to just do away with that and, 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 and be able to kind of have um, a secure system on a fly, then you have to, if you use the tools, then it, it's going to fix that for you. So, any other comments from people? I see we, we've still got a, people, a few people in there who've been paying attention throughout. Matthew, Mohammed, Moses, Nasif, any thoughts? How does this, is there anything there which is new, which you're not doing in your own installations? Are you using the DHS tools? None from me. Alice? Alice has her hand up. Yeah. Alice, are you trying to say something? I can't hear you. Nope, nothing from Alice. Oh, okay. Tito, have you already had any thoughts about, uh, I, I know you need to chat with Michael probably a little bit about this, but you know the CIS checklist you refer to, there's many, yes. many, many of them. Um, and what we do with DHIS2 is we kind of pick the core set of ones that applies. That we should at some point write down a checklist 
rather than just have the tools which Im are implementing all the controls. Or we should write down the checklist of all of the controls that should be applied to the Tomcat and the, and the proxy and also the database. Yeah, I'll have a I'll have a discussion with Michael, and um, I I already have a list that I do use when, when developing the um, the DHIS two tools, ensuring that um, I, I meet most of these uh, security checklists. But I'll have a, a discussion with Bob and come uh, with with um, Michael and come with a, come up with a list that that at least we will be following, uh, at least for the installation. However, this list is, is, has a lot of, um, of, of um, checks, which we don't use all of them. Mm. Yeah. So we need to go through this list again and decide there could be some of them that we're not doing that we should be doing. Um, yeah. Part of it is, so as a matter of, I know I did this with the proxy, and it took me almost a week. <laughs> there's, there's like 170 pages of controls on the Apache proxy. To actually go through page by page, control by control, and deciding which one to implement and which one's not. Mm -hmm. So I've done for the, um, for the Tomcat, but then um, not, not all the controls are, are, are implemented. And I'm planning to also check one for Postgres and one for uh, for Nginx proxy, and uh, at least those that that will not break anything are at least uh, configured. Yeah, I think we we need to get this onto a spreadsheet somehow, which is a bit awkward because it comes in a PDF. But um, where for each control we can say it's implemented or it's not implemented, and if it's not implemented, why it's not implemented. Okay. Um, and then we could be, we would be complete. Because it's not a requirement to implement everything, but we, if you don't implement something, then it's got to have a, a particular reason for it. Where, for example, application-specific logging. Now that applies if you've got, maybe different war files running on the same Tomcat, right? So you're running a couple of different applications, then each different application would have its own logging. Now in our case, because we really only have one DHIS2 running on one Tomcat, we don't necessarily have to implement that control. So we've got a justification for it. Um, similarly with 6.1, we don't have client cert authentication and we don't have, have 6.2 because the SSL termination is done by the proxy. Exactly. So not all the checks here really, as you mentioned, um, we can implement no, because already some. Yeah. Yeah, but it, when we don't implement it, we need to have a justification for why not. So yeah. that might be a useful spreadsheet to make. Otherwise, no, thanks, Tito. That's all from me. That was useful. So um, I'm planning to go one by one and, and, and um, I'll prepare the spreadsheet for um, all the components that we have. Uh, one of them is, of course, um, Apache Tomcat, and 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 I'll check one for Postgres and one for the um, for the proxy. And then I'll have at least check uh, all those uh, the security checks that at least are recommended by CIS. Then I'll have a meeting with Michael and and discuss extensively which ones are we going to implement and and which one are we we are not going to implement, and at least um, if we are not give reasons. That sounds like a good plan. Yeah. Moses, you have comment? 
Oh, yeah. No, thank you very much. I think this has been very informative. Okay. So I, I think uh, for today, we, we can stop there. Unless anybody else has a comment, additions? Not for me, thanks, Tito. Okay. Thank you everyone for, for joining and have a good day. Thank you.